Hey, this is Chad Nelson, CEO of the Surfrider Foundation. Welcome to this episode of The Current, where we're gonna talk about Surfrider's work on climate change. I'm thrilled to have Stephanie Seekich Quinn join us today. She is Surfrider's Coastal Preservation Manager. Hey, Steph. Hey, Chad. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. For decades, the Surfrider Foundation has been fighting against poorly planned development. And more recently, we've really taken efforts to address the impacts of climate change on our oceans and coasts. And we have some exciting legislation to talk about at both at the state and the federal level in 2021. So Steph, maybe you can start off by talking about how climate change is actually gonna impact our coasts and oceans and sort of why we should care. So yeah, Chad, the climate crisis is already impacting our ocean coasts and local communities. Uh, extreme weather events, sea level rise, and ocean acidification are impacting our community infrastructure, our ecosystems, and local economies. I mean, really, our ocean is at the center of climate change. It has absorbed about 30% of the CO2 that's been released while burning fossil fuels, and it's absorbed about 90% of the excess heat that's been trapped in the atmosphere. So in addition to all of this, we have our ocean waters that are warming. And as that happens, it can also increase harmful algae blooms, which are really dangerous to swimmers and surfers and, of course, marine life as well. Um, and as you know, you and I have talked about before, Chad, um, as coastal users, we are literally the canaries in the coal mine. We are some of the first people to experience the climate crisis along our coast. We are seeing our shorelines rapidly erode, and of course, we're the first to be taken out of the water once there's a sewage spill, which is typically linked to extreme rain events, which is also, again, linked to climate change. Um, and speaking of extreme weather, just last year, the 2020 hurricane season was the most busy on record, and it cost us billions and billions of dollars. And then as you and I were talking about earlier, Chad, just this summer alone, we have witnessed the climate crisis through massive flooding across the globe, extreme drought, increasing fires around the globe, and of course, record breaking temperatures. So here's some quick interesting facts that relate to our coast and climate. Our supporters that are on the Atlantic coast and the Gulf coast have experienced about 150% increase in sunny day flooding over the past 20 years which is pretty remarkable. And then here in Southern California, scientists predict that by the end of the century, up to 70% of beaches in Southern California will be gone. And then also in California, researchers have predicted that about 80% of surf spots will be drowned out and will be largely unsurfable due to sea level rise. And finally, scientists have estimated that by 2050, roughly 90% of our global coral reefs will die off due to coral bleaching, which is again caused by warming ocean waters. So yeah, Chad, these impacts are pretty intense and our members are gonna to continue to feel them now and into the future. Um, but I know we have some really great strategies that we're working on. Yeah, so scary stuff, uh, serious impacts. We're already feeling them today, but you know, we do know that by taking bold and decisive action now, we can stave off some of the worst impacts from climate change. So it's really critical that we take action today and try to address this before these problems on our coasts and oceans get worse. And the good news is that the Surfrider Foundation has a strategy to address those issues. And I would say it's like largely bucketed into three groups, outreach and education to help people understand the seriousness of the impacts of climate change to our coast. Second, we're really working hard to adapt our coastlines to the impacts of climate change, which include increased storms that you talked about and probably most importantly, sea level rise. And so one of the things we do is we publish a report called the State of the Beach Report, where we evaluate all the states across the nation, the coastal states, and uh, their preparedness for adapting to climate change. And we give them a grade, A through F, in terms of their ability. And we do that both to uh, highlight the strengths and weaknesses of the different states' plans and also encourage states that are lagging, that get those bad grades to up their game so they're prepared, which is so important. Um, and we're working in 25 different communities on coastal adaptation strategies because sea level rise is coming and so we need to plan and figure out how to ultimately how to adapt to that. 
last, we're advocating for really strong laws and policies to address climate change at the local, state, and federal level. We're trying to safeguard climate legislation and advance it in states. So we know that the oceans actually can also play a really important role in helping us buffer the impacts of climate change and they can be part of the solution. So maybe you can talk about some legislation in DC that we're really focused on to ensure that our oceans and coasts can actually be part of the climate uh, solution. Yeah, so we're really excited about a piece of legislation that was recently introduced. It's called the Ocean-Based Climate Solutions Act. And really the timing of this historic legislation comes at a really critical time as we talked about the climate crisis is continuing to impact our coastlines. So very simply, this historic legislation aims to do the following, is to permanently ban offshore oil drilling, which Surf Rider has been fighting for for decades, um, improve ocean protection, increase blue carbon systems, which essentially help absorb carbon from the air, um, promotes renewable and responsible development of offshore energy, whether that's wind or tidal. And then finally, as you just been talking about, is we, this legislation focuses on helping communities adapt to sea level rise and extreme weather events. Um, and just real briefly, just to mention at the state level, we worked really hard recently in Hawaii to pass a law that requires sea level rise disclosures in a real estate transaction. And yeah, there are most every state already has disclosures for real estate, such as, you know, repetitive flood loss, uh, fires, tsunamis, etc. But there's no state law that requires that sea level rise is disclosed. And so this is really historic as well. So this year so far, like as you mentioned, climate can be sometimes foreboding, but we have a lot of good stuff going on. And it does really give me good hope. Yeah, you know, there's two things I wanted to jump into real quick that you mentioned. Blue carbon. So this is a, a term for uh, the ability for these coastal ecosystems, wetlands, kelp, mangroves to absorb carbon. We know that they actually can absorb up to five times the amount of carbon as rainforests. So, you know, protecting our coastal ecosystems is really important so they can be part of the solution and actually sucking carbon out of the atmosphere. And then you talked about this legislation in Hawaii. I think it's really important for people to recognize that, you know, in the last hundred years, we've seen about eight, six to eight inches of sea level rise. And it's already caused the challenges we have, you know, and we're looking at, you know, one and a half to three feet to six feet of future sea level rise in the next decades to century. So coastal erosion issues are only going to get worse. And we need to make sure that people are not building in harm's way and ultimately figuring out how to get out of the way. So uh, really good stuff. The Ocean-Based Climate Solutions Act uh, is, is an important piece of legislation. And uh, so, you know, that's something obviously we're going to advocate for. But there are also things that uh, our audience and our members can do at home to try to help do their personal part to reduce the impacts of climate change. So maybe you can talk about some of the things that each of us can do to try to make a difference. Yeah, Chad, that's a great question. I think, as we mentioned before, there's great hope that we're doing at the policy level, but there's also great hope for just our individual actions on a daily basis. I mean, one thing that we can all do is to use less plastic. Plastic is made of fossil fuel, and the creation of plastic is extremely greenhouse gas intensive. Not only does it help with climate, but it also helps with our plastic pollution problem. So just that's a real simple one we can all just work on literally right now. Um, of course, try to buy your food locally. Shipping food around is a high um, greenhouse gas emissions. And try to eat less meat. You know, it really is unfortunate, but meat production um, creates a large amount of methane, which is contributing to climate change. Um, a lot of our members are already doing this, so this is great. It's just to ride a bike instead of driving. I can't tell you how many friends I know at Surfrider over the past 17 years that are constantly doing surf checks on their bike. Um, as we mentioned before, a really super easy way is to go to our website and sign our action alert for the Ocean-Based Climate Solutions Act. And then I really can't stress enough to get involved with your local chapter and attend these trainings that we put on to help our chapters better understand the climate crisis and how they can help work on effective solutions. Awesome. Well, thanks, Steph. I mean, it's pretty clear from this quick discussion that climate change is real. It's happening now. The impacts are serious, but there's a lot of opportunity to make a significant difference, whether it's what you're doing at home 
or getting involved with Surfrider and supporting local and state advocacy. So, you know, those are, I think, the things we need to continue to focus on to protect our coasts and oceans. So thanks for joining us, Steph. And uh, thanks everyone for tuning in to this episode of The Current. To learn more about Surfrider's work on climate change or get involved with our local chapters or to become a Surfrider member, please visit surfrider.org.